What's up guys, Joey here. I just wanted to share an updated memory stress testing guide for casual users and gamers for 2021. Uh, mainly because I've got a HCI mem test uh, stress testing guide that I put up and people are still liking it. So obviously they're still using it. And HCI mem test detects mem test helper, which is one of the apps I shared from GitHub that helps you automate the process of testing the right amount of RAM and the right amount of threads. And basically, HCI MemTest detects that program and force closes it, meaning you lose the window showing, you know, all the automation. You still get the manual, like you still get automatic window pop up so you can see all of the threads running, but it also doesn't stop automatically either. And basically, there's a better way to do that in one download package using DRAM calculator. And I just wanted to share that real quick um, just to help people out because... There's a lot of people that don't know how to stress test your RAM, or it can just be tedious using other applications that need you to reboot the computer and run outside of the desktop or um, download from questionable sources. So there are a few, like, and they're also paid. Like there's, um, I think Kahu is the name of one of them, Kahu Memory Tester, uh, Test Mem 5 made by the same guy that made DRAM Calculator. But again, I wasn't able to find what I would call trustworthy sources, even if they seem legit. Um, it's just nice to be able to download from a place like Tech Power Up, where you can see it's been downloaded like over a million times since May 2020. And if it was dodgy in any way, it would have been taken down. So that's where I, I recommend DRAM Calculator because it's got a built-in mem bench that also uses HCI mem test, but it's not getting detected and forced closed. So basically, I'll link this down in the comments. Uh, download. It's a zip file. I'll just quickly demonstrate how to use it. Uh, real quick. So most tech savvy users will already know how to do this kind of thing. So this is really aimed at more casual users and gamers. If you I just extract all, right click and extract all to wherever you saved it to. You can see I've got two copies saved here. Um, right click, extract all, and it'll go into its own folder. And you can see there the HCM M test and DRAM calculator. And so if you need um, long term stability, if you're running like five hour renders, if you do heavy video editing, or if you're running any kind of uh, folding at home type of tasks, obviously um, use more complex memory uh, stress tests, heavier stress tests. There's OCCT um, and yeah, test mem5 if, if you know. Um, and then you might want to even stress test for as long as eight hours. Uh, that like a really long memory test to make sure your RAM is rock stable if you're going to be leaving the system running for days at a time. But if you're just casual gaming, um, and casual user, you know, you're just browsing, streaming, playing uh, games like Warzone, for example, then this method works perfectly fine, and it's worked for me across three different builds. So just to share that I have actually used this method myself multiple times, and across three different builds, it's been rock solid. So 200% is my recommendation, same as with my previous video, but if you have the spare time, like you could do 200%, and a few weeks later, um, for example, you're going out shopping, or you're watching a, you know, a marathon session you could do 400 percent if you want to be extra sure but for me even 200 percent has been fine for the majority of use cases like i haven't had any crashes and i play a ton of fairly intensive games for long sessions so extract the folder and then run dram calculator and just go to the membench tab and you can see here like it's all automated you don't even have to calculate how much memory to use it'll kind of give you a preset number you can do some light usage in the background while this is running, but it will lag certain applications. It'll even lag my video if I start it while I'm recording using Relive. So you basically want to change Membench mode down to MemTest. And if you hover over it, uh, over the thing, just wait, it'll give a tooltip that says MemTest is for checking for errors, which is basically stress testing. And then it'll automatically put the right number of threads and set a task scope of 100. Now, I recommend 200 if you just want you know, to try to be as sure as you can that it's really stable, um, especially for the longer gameplay sessions. But if you've got the time, you could go up to 400 and then set it on single. So this will do that percentage per thread. So it'll take longer um, compared to doing it on total, but you'll have more thorough memory testing because you're not testing your entirety of your RAM. You're testing a portion of it um, and leaving enough spare for, you know, some streaming or doing something while it's running. So just an example, I've just put it to 200, and you can just see how it automates it. You just hit run, and it hides all the memtest windows for you, and it doesn't crash. So you can literally just leave it running in the background, 
uh, open up some websites and, you know, not be bored out of your mind while waiting for this to finish. But I highly recommend to do it uh, when you're, you know, watching TV series or something like that, where you're going to literally, the, the time will just fly by if you're doing that. And it doesn't lag as long as you're not heavily multitasking. So you can see my camera's actually lagging from this because it's real live. It's a little bit different. But you can just see that the app works fine and how simple that was. It's like a, how many megabytes is this download? It's like one, one MB uh, zip file, less than a megabyte. So that's a quick and easy method to stability test your, your RAM. You still have to do, you know, stability testing for your CPU. It's even, even if you haven't overclocked, I recommend you stability test your CPU new out of the box just so that you have a baseline that you know everything's working normally. Um, and the two main methods I would do is I would do your memory stress testing for 200% minimum uh, using an app like this. And then I would run something like ASUS RealBench for a minimum of 30 minutes. And that doesn't sound very long. Like I know there'll be people saying just 30 minutes, but that's the method I've used for a casual cross-rendering um, use case, like as a, as a home user. And I do fairly long, like, one to three hour recordings and I actually use the computer from like nine in the morning or, or sometimes much earlier all the way through like the whole day till nine at night. Uh, and I'll, the computer will be constantly like being used for something or my kids will hop on it. They'll be playing and rock solid, you know, and Warzone, um, certain games, Warzone, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, even Path of Exile when it gets heavy, like when you get heavy combat at the higher tiers, um, all of those games will be affected by instability. So, you know, you'll have crashes in Warzone fairly easily. Um, a lot of users were saying that Warzone crashes their system and the games just suck, it's not optimized. And a lot of it was actually instability brought up because the game is very uh, memory bandwidth intensive, CPU intensive and GPU intensive. So using this method, I've been able to run Warzone flawlessly and every other game I've thrown at it, really, Resident Evil uh, Village. Yeah, I, I got no complaints, but I just wanted to share this method because some of the methods out there are aimed at more really hardcore users that need 24 hour stability and they're kind of overkill. Like I, when I was younger, I used to use Prime 95 and that was one where people would leave it running overnight or eight hours, 12 hours. And for me, uh, since my 6th gen 6700K, like I stopped using that method because it's just overkill. And maybe I will crash in Prime. Like I could be rock stable with the testing I'm doing now that works for everything I use it for. Maybe if I ran Prime for two hours, I'd crash in, in one of the tests, like because they are fairly heavy tests or in AVX stress tests. But for gaming use case, this method has been really good. So I just wanted to share that because it can save a lot of hassle. Like there's people out there that, especially if you're stress testing multiple settings, like even, even when you're overclocking, um, you might be using a much more intensive method but you might be perfectly fine using this method uh, if you're not heavily, you know, loading your PC with something extreme. Um, that, and all I can really think of is uh, folding at home and long renders. Like if you're doing really long video renders, that's where you might need that long-term high load stability. But generally, you know, gaming doesn't load your CPU or your memory subsystem to 100% uh, the whole time. Like it's, it's always hovering like around 60, 70, 80, goes back down to 50 depending on what you're doing in your game. So yeah, I just wanted to share that and thanks for watching. Bye.